Hello, my name is Chris Fields. I'm going to present a little short video for the poster that we're having at BOSS 2022 on TADA, the Targeted Amplicon Diversity Analysis Workflow. Quick introduction, TADA is a tool for processing data for targeted Amplicon studies. Uh, it's a focus for generalizing input for diversity analyses. We work with this uh, a number of different types of data using this workflow, including 16S, of course, ITS, cytochrome oxidase, or COI, and a number of custom amplicons. Uh, we use the Data2 uh, workflow that's uh, implemented in R. Actually, in this, now it's kind of currently up to version 1.20, I believe. Um, this performs the initial denoising steps used for generating amplicon sequence variants, along with filtering counts, uh, chimera removal, taxonomic assignment, and so forth. We implemented this completely in uh, Nextflow using some basic uh, design principles by uh, NF Core. I would say this is loosely designed um, or based on this, but we're actually following a little bit more, hewing a little more closely to current NF Core principles. We also have added docular, uh, Docker and Singularity support on local HPC and on cloud. Along with continuous integration and uh, continuous uh, Docker builds using GitHub. Um, uh, the grid have workflows as, as a way to do this. Why? We're focusing on estimating taxonomic abundance. Um, in most cases, we've been doing this with 16S, uh, which is by far the most common use case that we've, ha we've had, that we have used this for others. Um, we initially developed this to start implementing it for V4 v analyses, but uh, with, as you'll see, with the advent of newer sequencing technologies and some idiosyncrasies with the way amplicons are derived, we wanted to make a workflow that is much more flexible. We also developed in-house here at the Carbon Biotech Center um, this fluid eye access array, which allows you to amplify multiple different um, amplicons for every sample. So you can have in this in the rows here your samples with unique barcodes uh, and for each of the samples, along with Illumina adapters. These are paired with target-specific tag primers. And so you have this multiplex reaction where you can have X number of samples times X number of primer pairs. And we've had instances or studies that have looked at 16S, ITS, um, 18S, archaea specific primers, as well as pathway specific primers. Um, so up to at least 20 to 30 different amplicon or primer pairs uh, be run. So this can generate a tremendous amount of data. And, and so we want to have a workflow that can adapt to these various idiosyncrasies with primer pairs. To use as an example of some of the things we have to deal with, 16S uh, has a number of different combinations of primer pairs, which, which illustrates some of the issues that we run into with, with Illumina paired in sequencing. So the simplest one is V4, the most common, where the reads completely overlap with 2 by 250 reads that you would get off of an Illumina MySeq or an Illumina NovaSeq. Um, uh, uh, using one of the smaller lanes. So you can actually imagine that these would completely overlap, the reads can somewhat self-correct for one another, and you can get really good uh, read pairs combined from this, but the information that you have in that region is fairly low. So you may want to jump to getting more information from additional variable regions, so you may want to add V3, but the ends of the sequencing reads will barely overlap. So V3, V4, is about 440 bases, and you get a small overlap of around 10 to 20 bases, depending. There's a little bit of variation in this region as well. So sequencing errors at the ends of the reads can cause issues with merging, and so you want to have a workflow that can adapt to that and potentially rescue reads, as well as you want to have a workflow that can maybe use only one of the, one of the reads for the analysis, so as a single end analysis. And then finally, V3, V5, where the reads don't overlap at all. So we want to have reads that you can actually do as, again, a single end, or you may want to merge those in the middle by adding a string of ends, uh, uncalled nucleotides, and do the analysis as if it was one long read. So we developed this workflow. Um, I'll have this in more detail at the poster. So if you want to stop by, I can actually go over the steps. Um, but to give you an idea, we start with FASTQ, single linear paradigm reads. We end up, after removing chimeras and using DADA2, generating ASVs in FASTA format. We do an alignment if uh, an alignment is needed, that's optional, and then a multiple uh, or maximum likelihood analysis using either FASTTree or the R package Fangorn. Taxonomic assignment is 
currently performed using Dada 2's assignment steps, um, though we have added, uh, talked about adding in additional support using Chime 2. Furthermore, we wanted to add in, uh, because things are changing, uh, long read support. And so we do have workflows that have PacBio, HiFi, and Loop, as well as Shoreline Strain ID. And we have actually processed and analyzed data uh, for a number of projects using, using these. And we're seeing actually these are, these are much more common. They're, they're actually quite expensive. And so when you're dealing with maybe tens to hundreds of samples, this is a viable option. Um, but if you're dealing with lots of samples, you're still going to be using Illumina sequencing. We've actually tested this. Uh, it's been implemented in the IBT courses um, from, for H3 Bionet. These are the intermediate bioinformatics training courses that focus on microbiome research. It's now currently hosted on GitHub under H3 Bionet with an MIT license. And we've performed additional cloud testing with this um, on Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, and Azure. I mean, we found that Google Cloud Platform offers a fairly nice cost-wise uh, option for, for running these workflows, though it does increase the amount of memory, the more samples you add, and this is because there are several steps in the process that involve pooling the samples together so you can learn error models, appropriate error models for, uh, for denoising the data. And that can lead to additional cost if you have lots and lots of samples. So it's something to keep in mind. So next we want to do DSL2, um, add additional reporting, integrate the long reads, which are separate in workflows currently. We want to integrate those into the main workflow, which we've been slowly adding over time, and then improve the Fluidime support uh, as well. And with that, I wanted to give us some final acknowledgments um, for everybody at CBIO and HPC Bio, the 16S course, and of course, funding from NIH and H3A Bionet for this effort. Thanks.